All right, so for today's video, we're going to be going over new deck lists. YCS Santa Cruz just happened, and I know that Latin American events don't really have a lot of coverage or a lot of spotlight on them, actually, which is kind of a bummer, but we are going to go through these deck lists. We don't have that many of them, but it's all the right ones, so I'm really excited to go through all of them. Please share all of your thoughts about what you think you know the correct ratios are or like if you have any issues with the deck list or if you feel like they're really good if you're gonna be testing any of them i would love to know and also what you are playing in this format would really interest me to know so there's that and also like the video if you do enjoy it going over the first deck list here we have a tier deck list now i usually go through these deck lists before i do the video just so i can sort of see if there's anything that's like you know really interesting and when it comes to this list it just kind of baffled me a little it's like it's just a little bit weird okay so it's only two rhino heart okay and then it's three tier cash okay that's fine and then there's the uh, denier together with malicious which is also okay but it's like the ratio of dangers is a little bit odd only one of mothman one of nessie and okay we also have the house should all the other should all the beast and also shayama i really like shayama there's two of diviner usually i've seen one copy of this which Diviner is fine. Maybe that's why it's only two Rhino Heart because you have multiple normal summons. Only two Fenrir, which is a little bit weird. Like, why not play three? You know, I'm not certain what the deck count is. I think it's okay. So I think it's 42. But at that point, like, you probably can cut something or just go over 40 and play three Fenrir. And you, they also don't play the Pressure Planet, which is also a little bit odd because it does give you, you know, the consistency that you kind of need a lot of times in tears some hands can be a little bit weird and they also play a ton of their spell and trap cards and usually what you would would be breaking on is like the spell and trap cards not doing anything on their own if you don't necessarily open the monsters that you need now obviously the the idea there is for you to mill them but it's still just i don't know it's a tiny bit weird i like two super poly a lot of times i um found myself playing like two super poly i i, I kind of like that sometimes it feels a little bit cloggy but it's still a good card only one talents though and looking through the side deck two draw two nibiro it's like this the entire ratio of two offs is interesting like look at this it's literally two there can be two droplet one thrust uh, Abyssaler is in the side, which we've seen a lot actually in some uh, Monodium lists and like Rescue Ace can also play it and they can decide whether they want to main deck it or side deck it. But yeah, I mean, Dweller is fine, but like, you know, one off of the two Bishios, it's like, it's, I don't know. Okay, let's see. So a lot of people are straying away from Rul Kalos. We have established that already, no more King of the Swamp and stuff like that. But okay, they do have Maron. All of this is pretty standard, but let's look at the links as well. So they are playing Toad and uh, and uh, Bahamut Shark when it comes to XYZ monsters, which is also fine. And as for the links, Cross Sheep is okay. Barricade Borg Blocker over Dark or SP. Okay, I get that the extra deck is a little bit tight. It's just quite interesting to me that there is no Dark. Dark feels very synonymous with the tier deck it's incredible gets you to share and gets you to other things it's like i don't know props to them for getting top four but it is an interesting list to say the least so i guess that you know not playing sp is not that horrible because it is very expensive so i get that but as for some other ratios like i am a little confused so okay this list is <laughs> got us off on a very um weird starts but i'm here for it let's see okay this next list top 32 from from patrick coben uh this list is the one i'm currently like i built it yesterday yesterday to test monodium and i wanted to build this particular list because it's you know patrick coben's list and I, I wanted to see you know what it does and i am liking it so far to be honest i think it's kind of clean and um yeah going through the list we have ash and fenrir which is cool so this is the fenrir version with skirklok ashtira as well as one pressure planet only one of the prosperity which he mentioned in the deck profile that he would probably play more and it's not very standard for the monodium deck but i totally get like okay you have one of them maybe you can have multiple just digging through your stuff you aren't drawing unless you go for the scareclaw effect like on summon if three or more defense position monsters are on the field you also get to draw a card when you do the effect 
but that's like not always going to happen. Usually when you're going second, it can. But other than that, you're not really drawing. So this makes sense. I also liked the two Reich phobia. Like a lot of times your link one is going to get stopped or and then you maybe draw into it or you want to have follow up, which I also like. And uh, other than that, as for the ratios of the Visas monsters, I think three Samsara, two, two of the like OG one uh, is fine because Samsara is a Visas. The new Synchro is also a Visas, which is cool. And as for the extra deck, like, I think it's, I think it's cool. Like, it's, he's not playing the uh, lock with Bishbalkin and all of that, which is nice. That's very healthy. <laughs> and as for your boards, like, you would, you still establish very strong boards. He is playing the hand loop, though, with Omega, but, you know. A lot of decks right now are doing a couple semi-degenerate things, and I feel like with Monodium, you just you need to play it well, you need to play through a lot of disruption, and um, it's not that easy to go second. It's, it's, it's okay, and you have quite a bit of space for non-engine, but it's still not the easiest time for you. And as for the side deck, I really like Shifter. I think it's cool when decks that are actually like top contenders can actually run shifter as well to counter some other strategies it's like it's really annoying when you have this one or two shifter decks like thunder and nexus sister and then everything everything else just like loses to it but using shifter as like your side deck option against some other decks i don't know i feel like it's just a little bit more fair you know as long as shifter exists at least we all can play it <laughs> if that makes sense so there's that. Also the two, like I said, you know, Dweller, Gagaga Cowboys see themselves, like find themselves in a lot of Monodium deck lists as well as Rescue Ace. There is, there is some back row hate, you know, Lightning Storm 2, uh, 2 Lightning Storm 1 Harvard Peas, but sometimes it is a little bit tough to play through some, you know, back row and uh, floodgates and stuff. So it's not that easy game one against uh, a stun deck. But I guess, you know, post side, you have, you know, you have the backward removal necessary. Also, I like the two light heart. I think two light heart is really important. Moving on to top 32, which is dragons. Now, this is dragons with the vision resonator, which very conveniently is also here on the screen. So if a level five or higher dark monster is on the field, you get to special summon this card. And um, basically, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one spell trap that mentions red dragon archfiend. Yes. Okay. I'm trying really hard to squint and read, but I, I do think that that's what the card does. So basically you have your quite regular dragon deck, but there is uh, there is no um, baby dragons. Basically there is the chaos phase, but you don't play the white dragon or the collapse serpent and no rocket stuff. So it's not the regular dragon link. It's just dragons with the vision resonator and um, some of the red dragon arch fiend stuff in the extra deck, which is interesting. I am very nostalgic towards rocket stuff so when i see a dragon list with no quick launch i kind of cringe but that's personal so you know props to them for doing well a ton of space for non-engine there's literally 14 of the spots for your for your tech cards and also horus cards together with you know everything dragon so i don't know i like it i think that there is something really cool about how dragons can just be built so very differently, you know, with Horus, with Resonator, regular, with Rocket. I think it's cool. And um, I'm really interested to see if Dragon still, like, you know, remains up there as, like, one of the top decks. Um, I'm excited, you know. As for the side deck, there is two DD Crow. There is Thrust with a couple going first targets, which is cool. And other than that, I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So moving on to the next list, we have Sprite. So this is 50 card Sprite, and uh, it's Adventure, Sprite, Nimble, Swap Frog, The Sunfish, and Non-Engine. And um, I think it's really cool that Sprite is still around. I like that the Adventure stuff sees play in this deck. I was always a fan of the idea, <laughs> but I could never like, I think I tried building it once, but it just didn't really seem to work for me. And um, I guess everything just kind of gets solved when you play 50 cards, you have enough space to play everything, you don't risk clogging on a couple things, but you still get to, you know, do all of your plays. And I like Swap Frog together with the link to get you to 
toad i think that's really cool reminiscent of the old sprite stuff and um just all in all you know when you see a sprite board if it's completely established it is not that easy to go through it because like the sprint balance is really annoying and usually they'll you know put it up together with non-engine sprite disruption that you have and the adventure stuff it's really tough to be able to deal with everything and a lot of times they are able to have some kind of follow-up which definitely is worse now that elf is banned but still you know if they play well which obviously this person played well they have enough to play on the following turn and it's really really tough to stop them at that point another of the decks that can play shifter in the side and also a couple going first cards like anti-spell and summon limit which summon limit is just summon limit is horrible i don't i can't even i really dislike it but obviously this deck can make great use of it as for non-engine we have draw ash a droplet which really rose in popularity now that Gashida rice heart is gone impermanence talents and evenly matched so i like evenly matched in the deck this deck overall just played a lot of going second cards in some different versions so um you know, it's cool that this is part of non-engine as well. So there is that. And moving on to Mikanko. Now, Mikanko won the entire event. And basically, it's what we have seen already. We saw it on stream at Indianapolis. And it's the version with Acid Golem Lock and um, the Geonator Transverser, uh, Ganon Ken, and all of that. So essentially, from what I have gathered, this build was like tested beforehand by by the winner and i guess they just both played the the deck at their respective events and um this person actually managed to win the entire thing with this mikanko version so it is not the most regular one it is not uh, tailored for going second but essentially you have your mikanko side of things which just overall you know speaking of mikanko their cards are not bad at all like some of their cards are actually really busted and then you also have the gan and ken and I'm pretty sure that this list, also from, from some of the info I, s I saw, is that the, this list is missing Renault. So Renault makes a lot of sense with the Diabella Star package. Essentially, you, you have the Renault as well as Fire Flint Lady for your level one fire monsters. And you do, you do the entire Isolde combo. You give them like the acid golem at the very end. You make it and you switch it with the Gen or Ken, whichever you put on their field so essentially you're able to consistently do the lock and not to mention that since he is playing the talents and the thrust you're also always going to make them live so <laughs> this deck is kind of it, it's kind of insane if you think about it you know it is one of those instances where you have a deck and it doesn't really matter which deck it is because it's just playing very busted engines the abella star again and can the lock and then you know oh it's mikanko okay fine let's pair it up with mikanko so I don't know. I think it's cool seeing the deck the well. The lock is horrible, but very interesting take on this deck. Something we haven't really seen before, but might become more popular and we'll see what happens. So yeah, you know, that's pretty much what the deck is. More non-engine in the side. Obviously you have uh, going second cards in the form of uh, Herald of the Abyss as well as Harpies. And since you have two thrusts already you have an additional one and those are your targets as well as uh, the barrier and you have a couple hand traps as well to round the deck off so moving on to another of the monodium lists now this one is let's see only two samsara which samsara is kind of nice at three i think but you can do whatever you want and um also, there is no pressure planet, if I'm not mistaken. So three Fenrir as well as one Scarecrow Kashira, but no pressure planet, which is a little odd. Maybe it's also missing. I don't know. If you know, please let me know. But I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Like you get to, to the Fenrir, which just gets you to Scarecrow Cache if you need it. And it's just a very nice piece of a, you know, an extender and also a little more easy to OTK with if that's the situation you find yourself in. Um, a couple hand traps for non-engine. I think Vader is kind of... It's nice. It's very weird. It's like you either main deck it or you don't play it at all. I got this comment on my Hendrix tier list and I think it really summed up Valor perfectly. And uh, there is also the Mikanko spell. I will have it on the screen. I forgot the name of it, but it's not in every single list. From what I've seen, it's usually actually omitted from the list, but they decided to play it. And as for the extra deck, like the two Astroloud is pretty much standard. And you have your uh, Syncros, which are also standard. Chaos Angel is also like can be excluded you don't need to play it if you don't want to there is dweller in the extra deck as well some people cited like we have established and um let's see what's actually different 
Aha, uh-huh, okay, so Patrick Owen played the the other, the, the new Zeus. I think the new Zeus is cool, but it's like, it's not always going to come up. So a lot of times people may want to cut it, but I just think it has a lot of value if you find yourself in that kind of situation. And also one of the trends we have seen in a couple of these decklists now is Spellbound. Spell, Spellbound is really nice. It's called against Pearly, against Flunder and some other decks. So I really like this as a tech card. And Nibiru is also still here. And uh, Didi Crow, I think, is also really nice. Uh, not everyone is playing it, but I think it has a ton of power and potential. Okay, moving on to Unchained, which also saw success at this event. So this is a very standard list. We won't really go in depth. It's, um, yeah, pretty much almost every single ratio is standard. They are also playing the Disaster, I think it's called, which is not in every list, but you can play it if you want, especially for the mirror match. It's nice. And um, I really like the Dark Contract engine. It's just really, really busted, in my opinion. One off of the Talents and Thrust, which I guess it's fine. And as for the non engine, you have Ash, Impermanence. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so Ash Impermanence. Oh, okay, there's Nibiru as well. <laughs> I kind of missed it for a second there. And you have more hand traps in the side and also Mistaken Arrest, which is really cool. I like this card a lot. And as for the extra deck, um, everything is standard. There is the Darius, which it's also like personal preference if you want to play it. And the um, uh, Griffin lock is still... I guess here, but some people also play Nightmare Unicorn in the deck and uh, this person decided to, I guess, play Darius over it or maybe the the Link 5. So, yes. Okay, fine. Very standard list. Moving on. So the Labyrinth deck. It is one off of the Lovely, two off of the Lady, and then also Ariana as well as Butler. So no Ariane. It's like the other, the pink one, which we saw in one of the lists in my last video that I did on deck lists. And um, also the ratio of the furniture, I think is pretty much established at this point. Three of the chandelier, one of the cook clock and two of the stovey. And, you know, the butler is kind of like, um, it was really well received once it was announced. Like people were excited for it, but kind of like... It just doesn't seem like it's doing that much for the deck, if that makes sense. Like, you can play it, but you don't really need to. It is not the most busted piece of support, but it's also not bad. It's just kind of like, meh, you know, decent. <laughs> and um, they are playing King of the Sky Prison in the main deck, which a lot of times you'll see in side decks. But I think that's fine. It's, you know, it's a cool card. And um, they're also playing Extravagance. And as for the hand chefs, there is Ash, but also, okay, no, nothing else. There's no other hand chefs in the side. There is Bestios, though, which you can count as hand chefs. I like Lava Golem and Sphere Mode in this deck in particular because, you know, I can actually utilize them and they are nice against the meta, cool against Monodium, for example, and some other decks that just establish a lot of bodies. And um, the ratio of Labyrinths is two of the Welcome, three of the Big Welcome, which is standard, a couple of Floodgates. A lot of floodgates actually there's literally like eight floodgates and also strike which is fine two of the sp so definitely cashing out on this card and uh, as well as chaos angel so this deck is you know it's a tiny bit expensive but uh labyrinth is so nice and um i feel like I, I always say this, but it's a little tough to choose your trap cards in a diverse meta. But I think you can never go wrong with a couple of floodgates and like strike and just very generic stuff. And also you have the um, uh, IDP for Unchained, which is nice. And uh, yeah, I just feel like this deck seems cool. It seems like it's well thought out, you know, the way it's built. And I, I do like it. So I think that's going to be it for the video. I wanted to cover different deck lists. So we covered combo decks and then Sprite, which is just a little bit different and um labyrinth and all of that the mikanko lock so there's a lot going on in the meta and um i'm really interested to see like i said before please let me know what you are playing and what your take is on this entire insane diverse format and if you like the video please make sure to like it as well as ding the bell so you are always notified when i post new videos and i'll see you in the next one bye